Hey friends, in our previous lesson, we looked at what ServerPod is all about, and we also did an installation of ServerPod in our local machines. Now we're going to now focus on the application that we're going to create based on ServerPod, which will be our full stack Trello app, uh, which will be written in Flutter and we'll use ServerPod as our server side. So let's talk about Trello. Trello consists uh, has a specific hierarchical structure which consists of workspaces, boards, lists, and cards. So in a, in a general outline, the workspaces are the highest level of organization and they're the ones that hold multiple boards. And for the board, each board represents a specific project or an area of focus and it consists also of lists which represents now the categories within that board. For example, to do in progress and completed. And within those lists, they contain individual cards, which represent tasks, ideas, or items that need attention. So cards can be moved between lists to indicate progress or changes in status. So that's what we're going to have a look on. And we're going to create a uh, clone other existing and the most popular Trello app. And I hope you'll enjoy it. So now let's head over to creating our first project and design the database as our first task. Let's create our, our project, ServerPod Create Trello App Clone. It will generate a number of files and the project will constitute of three folders, the client side, the Flutter side, and the server side. Let's navigate to the project. Great, so in this lesson, we'll focus on the Trello app clone server side, the server folder, and we're going to focus on the lib section, lib folder, specifically SRC folder and on the, in the protocol folder. That's where we're going to design our database. It already comes with a default. So our first table that we create is a user table. So we'll define uh, a class called user, table called user and it will consist of fields these fields will be name of data type string then we'll have email of data type string we'll have password of data type string which will come encrypted and the handle of data type string and the id is auto generated in server pod so you don't have to add it Next, we're going to create the workspace table. So we define our class. So our class will be called workspace. Our table will be called workspace. So our fields will consist of the user ID, which will have a parent-child relationship between the user and the workspace. We'll have the workspace name, the handle of the workspace, both in data type string, the description of the workspace of data type string, the visibility of data type string, members. Uh, so we'll need to create a member table and class. So the member will revolve refers to the members of that specific workspace. So they have to be users to exist in the user table. So we'll have the workspace ID to represent uh, to create a parent child relationship between the two. Then we'll have the user ID. So that means the ID that is that should the member ID should be existing as a user ID, then the name and the role. Then we head back to the workspace and specify the list. We want a list of members when we get the workspace data but just for api purposes great next we have the board entity so we create the class board then the table board the fields will consist of the workspace id which will be have a parent child relationship between the two then we'll have the user id as well so there'll be a parent child relationship then we have the name, which will be the name of the board, this description of the board, which will be nullable. Visibility will be of data type string. And we'll have um, the background of data type string. We'll get to see that. 
stud will be of data type bool enable cover watch data type boolean available offline true or false um label will be of data type string email address of the specific board be nullable data type string and commenting of data type int and the member type of data type int lastly pinned if you want to pin it on the home screen or not self join data type bool and if you want to close the board true or false data type bool great and please note that the id is generated automatically by server pod next we'll look at the list so we'll have our class list our table will be called list then our fields will consist of board id so there'll be a parent child relationship between the board and the list user id there'll be a parent child relationship between the user id and the list then the name of the list and whether it's archived or not so data type boolean and we'll also represent get to get the list of cards so we need to define the card class as well same thing so for the fields for the cards we'll have the list id which there'll be a parent child relationship between the list and the card same as the user id and then we'll have the name of the card the description of the card the start time which will be wait start date which will be of date time data type due date which will be of data type date time and then attachment whether it has an attachment or not so data type bool archived or not so data type bool and checklist whether it has checklists and then we have also whether it has comments yes true or false so we'll have the data type boolean now let's add our list of cards that will be returned in form of type for api purposes only great now we're going to create another class and table called activity so we're going to be logging the various activities that are happening within the application so we'll have our field will be the board id or of data type int with a parent child relationship together with the user id then we're going to have also the card id um, and the board id and the card id will be nullable so i may be wanting to get the activity of a card id without having to pass the board id or vice versa then the description of in terms of the activity and the date created great now that is done we want to also add another table for attachment now so if you recall we had specified in the card uh, to know whether the, the, this card has an attachment or not and if it does we come over this table and pick the url we'll try we'll, we want to upload a file on server pod uh, as an attachment so we'll have a user id data type int card id data type int both are parent have parent child relationship and the attachment string which will be the path next we're going to have the checklist table as well uh, which will also if you remember we had the on the card table we had checked if it has a checklist true or false if it does have we go ahead and get them from the checklist table so we have the card id of data type int so that's it has a parent child relationship then the name or the string and then the status whether it is active or inactive then we also have the comment yaml or comment table where we also stated in the card if it has comments yes so we come and pick them on this table where we have the fields as card id that type int with a parent child relationship together with the user id and then the description which will be the comment itself Great, so these are all the tables that or the design of how we will expect our database to look like. So let's navigate to the that specific folder. 
and then we'll run the command server pod generate so it generates for us uh, all that we have done it will generate an sql sql for us so we have an error and the reason for this error is because also we have to watch out the names that we give our yaml files and our class and our tables so let's change that so i've changed the list to list board for the class the table and also the file name so that we do not conflict with the list data type which already exists so if now that we have changed that if we try and run it again it goes through well so we this uh, server port generates for us the sql that we're going to actually pick and run it in a database client called postico so that's uh so that server pod has done that for us um we're going to run the docker remember we had installed the docker in the previous lesson because that's where our redis and our postgres is actually hosted and then we're going to run our dat bin main dot dat so the server is on and up and running So our Docker is running and the Redis and the Postgres is up and running. So there's something called, there's a database client for Postgres called Postico. I'll share the link down below that will allow us to access the database and we'll use whatever we have been provided for on the generated file, the SQL to run and create our tables. So on the config folder, it provides the configurations that you need to connect to the specific database that's running on the Docker. And once you've done that, we are we run the SQL and it's able to generate all these folders, all these tables for us. So what uh, ServerPod does, whenever you make any change in your YAML files and you generate, it, it logs, it even detects when you have altered a specific column, a specific uh, field, um, if changed the name and all that. So we're just picking the, uh, the SQL part where it creates the tables and as you can see, uh, it, it has gone successfully and all our tables are running and it comes with default uh, tables for server pod purposes alone but what we have uh, created is also being displayed the user table the workspace the board and the like so once that is done we are good to go for the next lesson